Jacket Ends was quite the ambitious project by Studio Nut. Airing around the midpoint of the year 2020, in a very packed season thanks to all the previous delays, it kind of flew under the radar for the most part. Never mind the three big sequels that it had the misfortune of airing alongside, there's the really hyped God of High School, Great Pretender and Rent a Girlfriend to contend with. However, for an action sci-fi show that looked like an offshoot to those Attack on Titan-like shows at first, it truly came into its own a few episodes into its run. For something that's not so popular, the team did a stellar job in terms of production, and it's a lot deeper than people initially gave it credit for. Can't be helped with the rough or generic looking start, but after finishing it, I'd say that I came out more than satisfied with the character dynamics and the messages in the show. It probably won't get a second season, but really it doesn't need one. Here's a show that's very easy to give a pass. Just look at how it looks. Granted, I fell into the same trap, but I eventually came around to watching it and have to say that I was blown away. For how simplistic it looks, Ranking of Kings manages to weave an underdog story for the ages. There's so much that people give Ranking of Kings praise for. There's the plot itself, there's the music and presentation, and there's a way in which it creates drama and stakes. Now, I agree with all of those, but for me, the strongest one must be in how it presented the characters. Every notable character, no matter how small they are in the grand scheme of things feels really fleshed out with their motivations and character roots. Ranking of Kings is a classic example of the famous saying never judge a book by its cover. Its art style unfortunately holds it back from being blind watched by people randomly browsing the seasonal lists looking for something new to watch but I assure you the journey is worth it. Honestly, I haven't had too many chances to enjoy military anime the past few years. Mecha shows I do watch, and there are some great hits from the past decades like Code Geass and Gundam IBO. There are also fringe military shows, as in barely qualify as one in certain angles like Kimi-sen that I enjoyed, but if we're going with something that speaks more to us in a societal level, coupled with a sci-fi backdrop that's more of a few decades into the future instead of a century or millennia, it's a bit harder to find shows like 86. It's a testament to how unique 86 feels. Sci-fi and military are rare, but the way it's delivered and how much it acts as both an exciting action drama, a society study and an ultimately heartwarming tale of trials and tribulations doesn't seem as common. It's got a little of everything you'd want from the genre. I dare say that compared to a lot of the hits that I'll be going over in the second half, it's even more profound and has themes that speak heavily to the world at large. Unfortunately, military and socio-philosophical commentary just doesn't seem to be as mainstream, which is why it's just a six. It's not underappreciated or anything like that, not at all. It's just that given the package it's in, it just finds it hard to truly break into the mainstream. Thing that I had mixed expectations for. All we knew about it is that it was a music oriented action show with a sci fi backdrop and that somehow Re Zero guys were behind it. Dape in sci fi and one with Terminator like vibes combined with music? Truly an interesting blend of things. Right. It's easy to look at the special effects and praise VV's excellent in feels like music art and awe-inspiring fight scenes, some which I feel hold up damn well a year after its airing. Taken down to the bare bones, VV is a thriller anime that looks and sounds good, and in the fields it does well. It does really well. The amusing thing about VV, however, is that it's one of the shows that I feel resonate this strongly when it comes to talking about society's growing infusion with technology and all the dangers that come with it. It's got some themes that look more and more relevant the more years we go through in this world. VV, unlike similar shows like Ghost in the Shell, may not be remembered in the slightest years from now. Heck, I feel it's largely faded from the public sphere already actually, but there's no doubting its message, its core value as a sci-fi thriller, and how fun the ride it took me through when I first watched it. If we're talking just 2021, it has a case for being one of the best... <laughs> I'm not sure how big of a hit Death Game Survival shows are to you all, but Gleipnir has been one of the surprises of its season. I might be a bit biased because I also like Darwin's game and Battle Game in 5 seconds, but amongst those shows, I'd say that Gleipnir was the one that stood out the most if we're talking general anime community. In contrast to Decadence, Gleipnir took advantage of all those delays. It's just perception and all, but with the big hitters in its genre mostly out of the way, a lot more people tuned into Gleipnir and it wasted no time wowing them with the pristine fight scenes and very intriguing story. It's just a shame that this 
this one ended in such a confusing manner. They did an anime original ending right after starting to tease us with a big overarching plot because they probably figured out they wanted an action finale which wasn't anywhere near that manga stopping point. Still, the confusing ending does little to bring down the enjoyment of the show and I dare say that the first two thirds of Gleipnir is legitimately a great show if you're up for edgy fights, a dark atmosphere and some cool dynamics between the two contrasting leads. Weren't, weren't they? Back then there was this movement to bring Korean webtoons in anime format and what better one to start the movement off than probably the most popular webtoon of them all, Tower of God. Combining a lot of the familiar story beats with a very creative setting and a lot of great world building and cool characters and action, it's no surprise Tower of God became as famous as it did. Amongst the shows I've talked about so far, it's probably the most focused on exploration and adventure over fights. In a sense, it fits the traditional explorative mold that people have grown to love. It's also got a story that, while not as deep or profound as Decadence, relatively speaking, it does have its fair share of substance. My only gripe, however, is that the entire season is basically the prologue. Yeah, you bet that right. As a standalone, it does very well, and I really enjoyed it, but I think of what it could have been. Sure, it will get better soon, but I don't see this getting a second season anytime soon. It's a glorified commercial, even more so than the standard manga or light novel adaptations, and I feel because of that, it's such a waste. <laughs>